Okay, our first order of business is the minutes from our last Zoom meeting. Did, did we get May 14th. I seem to have dropped, I don't seem to have an email with agenda or minutes. Did I, I was looking for it that. came in two separate yeah. emails. Date? I think it was Friday. Was it Friday, Julie, that you sent it? It was Friday. Yeah. Yep, I got it. Yeah. The... It was the first of the two. Huh. Okay. The one. The one I have is about tobacco and supporting evidence. So it's not that one, which I already no. saved. There's a one right before that, or in my... It's a June 5th, I think. On the 5th. Mm. Want me to forward it to you? Yeah, let me just, let me just look here. Uh... It was Friday, June 5th, right? Mm -hmm. Weird. I only have one email from Julie that day. So I either deleted it by mistake or... So sure, forward it to me. Don't know what happened to that one. Let me just make sure I got the right one. Okay. Uh... Really strange. Should be on the way. Yeah, I mean, it's not in my trash and it's not in my inbox. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, there we go. No problem. You said you just sent it to me? Mm -hmm. Make sure it got sent. Yep, got it. Okay. Oh, Julie sent it to UMass, not the Comcast. That's the problem. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I get a mixture and I, I try to keep this on Comcast, not UMass. Okay, yeah, got I, it. I That's... I it to Comcast, I'm sorry. Yeah, got it. No problem. Download. So as long as there's this little pause while John's bringing that up, um, it, that's great what Steve just said um, about getting a recording of the meeting. I was also going to suggest that maybe you want to identify one of you as taking minutes and then the uh, and someone else as working on the changes in the document. You know, because in some ways, some of the minutes, like I don't think we have to you have to capture all the discussion around it, just kind of the salient points. So I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. That's why I asked Sean, mm -hmm. because I thought if I ended up doing both, it's going to be tough. So yeah. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. So does someone want to volunteer to do one or the other? I mean, I've been doing the minutes, so I'm happy, but either one, either one. I can, I can do the stab at the, at the um, document. Okay. That would be great. Now that I'm, I'm all muddled reading all of them today. Yeah. <laughs> and, and doing the webinar. Right. That added a few things to <laughs> the mix. <laughs> and I did the second half of the webinar. Mark was driving to Boston because we're here because he's having knee surgery tomorrow. Oh my. So I was doing it on my iPhone and there were some 
blank spots for the iPhone through Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to review the minutes? Okay, minutes. They looked fine to me. Anybody else comments on it? Look good to me. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. Second. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so all eyes. Thank you. Now, we get to move on to the tobacco regulations. And I want to make another suggestion there, too. Okay. I, I sent, um, I sent, you know, three different documents, and then Maureen and Nancy sent some things, and right. maybe Steve did also. And I know it's a lot. I sent it out to you to kind of refresh your minds about it all. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think I wanted to suggest that. So, some of the hard work <coughs> happening for many months was partly around the fact that will the June first regs be? Um, the state ones be uh, challenged and they weren't, so they passed. So I would, I think maybe going into this, you might wanna come up with a plan of how you wanna do this. I have had a couple ideas, but it's up to you all to decide your process. So one could be that you could work on the things that are kind of low hanging fruit. You've had a lot of discussion. You kind of know, yes, we're gonna, put this in there. And then as you come to the more bumpier things where maybe there's disagreement or you don't know yet, you put that in a parking lot so that some pieces of it can get done. Because what's happened in a lot of meetings, I think, is it sort of gets circular because there's so many pieces to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what ideas you all have for how to do this in kind of a linear, productive manner. I think there are just two really substantive things. We've mentioned them before, the cap and the exclusion zone. Those are really the only decisions. I think we've made all, we're going to allow 0.35% um, at the convenience stores and so on. So I think that's the only thing other than just making everything consistent, which is a big job. The, another th substantive thing, I don't see any um, mention of smoking bars being prohibited, but I think they are. So that has to be added. But other than that, I think it's just a lot of language. We prohibited the smoking bars in the two, 2015 regulation. Well, they're not in. No, we didn't. We they, didn't. They, it's not mentioned there. I think they're prohibited on the basis of the fact that no smoking is allowed in any indoor space. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, that's and right. that was the way it was limited. But I think from that webinar today, um, they did mention that saying it specifically because it might imply yes. that vaping is a uh, possible in such a space. Right. So I think that's a decision yeah, to make. Yeah. So let's make those three decisions. And we, you know, we really, I think we can make it quite quickly. And then the issue is, are we aiming for basically going through the whole and at least get, getting a sense of which language needs to be changed today? So then it's just a question of somebody putting it together and then having another review of the final thing. But I think if we do the three things, that's really all we have to decide. The rest of it is consistency, I think. In, in my review, there's a lot of language that's in the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards that seems useful and more clear than some of the language that we have. So I don't think it's substantive, but I think it's helpful. So I agree with you, Maureen, especially I looked at them. I did the webinar. Then I came here and I looked at them again. And my head is going, wah, 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 wah. And I kept going back to the draft, the newest draft that, from Cheryl. And it, it made it easier for me looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, so do you want to start with the three decisions? Or yes. are you starting yeah. with yes. yes. So I'd like to bring up prohibiting smoking bars. What are people's thoughts? My thoughts is why not? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Discussion? Where the argument against the argument against them is that even though people, even though it's not a bad idea to congregate people who wish to do that to themselves all in one place, there has to be other staff there that are going to be exposed. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a good argument against it. Timothy, what do you think? Uh, I I think it's a, it's the same argument that uh, uh, it has more denser smoking areas. It has some health effects too for themselves, but I think we are not worried about that now, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's for the employer, employers, you know, so employees there. So I agree and I think it has to be restricted. And I also wondered about the work of monitoring and, and um, inspecting those, those uh, institutions. Yes. And I found it interesting today, but I, I think I left those notes in the car. I was taking notes as we were driving. That Cheryl said that there were 26 smoking bars mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. 12 are in Springfield. Six are in Worcester. We know one is in Akawam and the rest are all over. So just leave them where they are. So remember, remember what you, wait, what you could do with these different topics is you know kind of do a little thumbs up thumbs down because if you're all thumbs up where you're for it you don't have to have conversation mm -hmm. so I think that's sometimes where the process gets bogged down i've found that helpful in groups where and if people aren't sure you go sideways and then you can have discussions so thumbs up no bars thumbs down and for the bar or however you want to do it and that way then you have the discussion if you need it because you've all thought about this for a long time what if I just make a motion that we do not allow smoking bars in Amherst? All in favor? Somebody's going to gonna second it first. Oh, yeah, um, someone has to second. I can second it. Can I ask one question? This is just an informational question. I'm in favor of what we were discussing. For those places that have smoking bars, do they have something in there to protect employees? No. No, I mean, it's, it's much like um, the place really? like in California where people can smoke weed inside and stuff. They try to make these, these ventilation systems and things, but they're really not effective. It's just like when they were looking at banning smoking yeah. restaurants, they really weren't able, and people didn't want to do that, they really right. to come up with something that would make right. that more safe. Right. So somehow there's some rat rationality that you can have a smoking bar with an employee, but you can't have second say and smoke in a bar. I mean, it does, well, it, I it's not irrational. <laughs> well, but. maybe it's because by definition, you know exactly what this business is and you're only going to work there if you're a smoker. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I realize, but, but we don't regulate all hazards according to someone deciding to take on the hazard or not, right? So in this case, um, yeah. yeah, anyway, I'm for it. Let's ban the things. <laughs> More discussion? You want to vote? So it was moved and seconded that Amherst does not have any smoking bars. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? Okay, so five votes, no smoking bars in Amherst. Okay, okay. took care of that one. Exclusion zone, next. Exclusion zone, okay. Remember the um, idea. The idea educate there is, me. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is, I believe, that someone with an existing tobacco license could divide their store, let's say a convenience store, and they want to have it both ways, and so they just put a barrier down the middle of the store and make a adult only on one side and a non age restricted on the other. And you know that's free enterprise, I suppose. But you know it seems like it's maybe not a good idea to allow that to happen routinely and easily. And so if you put even 25 feet or 50 feet between the, the uh, necessary distance between them, you prohibit that. And is that done in other regulations? Have you seen that? Have we well, seen it's, that it, it, it's done in this case for the MAHB. They recommend it. They say anywhere between 25 and 500 feet. Between a uh, adult between, and or any two establishments? No, no, between an existing adult and any other tobacco no uh that's good uh, yeah is it an existing adult 
I think it's between any two, actually. In a two. Either adult or not adult, or what's yeah. what's by the way, what is the formally everybody agrees on term for convenience store that sells cigarettes? It, that's a that's a non age restricted. Non age restricted sounds good. Okay, yeah. non age restricted. Um, retail establishment. <laughs> Retail establishment, yeah. You, so, you know, the, the language is no, uh, as of the date of the regulation, no new adult only retail tobacco store shall be located within X number of feet of a retailer with a tobacco product sales permit. So it's okay. no new adult next, next to within 50 feet of any other existing one. Yeah. So if you made the amount of feet small, you're not really impacting the fact that maybe somebody next door wants to have a regular tobacco re license. You're really just addressing somebody trying to divide up their store, which is what DJ had recommended. Yes. But then there's that whole issue of new permits, which makes some of this discussion like crazy to me, yes. because they're, if we're not going to allow new licenses, like increase the number and the only way you can like change the number uh, like take uh, you have to get an existing license from an existing know, frankly, yeah this is why it's confusing to me too i think that the reason they're recommending it is that they're concerned that there's a loophole that someone would be able to take that one license and say well i got this room next door and that's going to be I'm, I'm going to be adult only here and that's going to be regular. I don't know. I, I frankly, I didn't get to understand enough from DJ about that. But since they're recommending it and they're putting it in there, um, I think if we keep it not too big, because I know you had talked about having concerns about, you know, if it was 500 feet, would oh, we yeah. you know, hurt a business next door or something? Well, you just, if you have 500 feet or even 300 feet, you, you basically eliminate the possibility altogether because of the limited commercial zones in Amherst. Right, right. That's an underhanded yeah. way of doing this. Uh, if you did that, it would be an underhanded way of making it impossible, in my opinion. So better to use a lower, like 25 or 50 feet. Yeah, so we're, let's stick with the, not the cap, but the exclusion. Exclusion zone. Yeah, we're talking about exclusion. Exclusion zone would say, a tobacco product sales permit shall not be issued to any new applicant for a retail location within X or 500 feet of a retailer with a valid tobacco product sales permit as measured in a straight line. But not 500. Though. 25 yeah. or 50. Which yeah. one do you want to do? 50. Yeah. 50. So should we have a motion? Yes. I'm, I'll move it. Okay. Second? I can second it. Okay. All in favor of having an exclusionary zone. So it will read, a tobacco product sales permit shall not be issued to any new applicant for a retail location within 50 feet of a retailer with a valid tobacco product sales permit as measured by a straight line. Okay. It's E in the in the state draft, in Cheryl's draft. Do, do we have that? Do we have that. <laughs> when you say Cheryl's draft, I, I mean I assume what we were sent as drafts were written by us or you guys. Or, oh, there's a, there were also what? MAHB ones. The MAHB. Cheryl's yeah. is the MAHB one. Yeah. That, that's the sample. So there's three different ones. There's ours unmarked up. There's ours marked up with a million colors, and then MAHB. But which email did the MAHB <coughs> just for my information? I think the first. I think the first one, the one with the minutes. The last attachment of the first. Oh, okay. That's why I hadn't noticed it. Okay, got it. Thank you. And it's number E in that. Yeah. Um, okay. One question that came up, and it's sort of related to the prior thing we talked about, but. Um, does can a non-age restricted retailer switch to adult only license? Can you change that? 
Would that discussion come up under the cap or is that? Yeah, that's a different discussion, I that's think. A different discussion. We can get to that. No. Okay, that's a that's different interesting one for me, but. Well, I just didn't know. We just talked about a new adult retail and I didn't know if that, if changing from when, when people were asking about that and you're saying it wasn't necessary, I was wondering if a, a retail can switch to adult, which would make it a new and, and thus the thing we just passed would apply to it. That's, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it has to do with the capping. Um, okay. okay. Well, yeah, the capping would influence whatever I'm asking about. Yes, it's interrelated. Yeah, it's, right. It's very tricky to think about this for me. So, so did, did you guys vote within 50 feet of another license or more discussion or? No, I wanted added that, that question. So is there more discussion? I thought we, we voted on the sales. I don't think we did. Oh, we, we did? did. Yes. I thought we did. So then we have the 50 feet are in, okay. That, did we not vote? Yeah. I thought we did. No, we did not vote on Oh, we not didn't vote? vote? We did not vote. You asked oh, okay. Question. All right. Okay. We made a motion. So, First and second. There was a motion and a second. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. Okay. So we are now voting on having the 50 feet exclusionary zone. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And any abstention? No, so we have five ayes. Okay, now the cap, which that baffles my brain. If we wanted to let every, let people do what they want to do, we would obviously not have a cap because supply and demand would work out if you need no. more adult only or not. Yeah. However, I think the subtext is we want to have any type of way we can to prevent people from doing what they want to do. And so in that case, you'd make a cap that, that restricts people's ability to let supply and demand work it all out. And I totally agree with that when it comes to youth access or secondhand, whatever, but I am very skeptical about doing it when you have adults who are not institutionalized and under diminished capacity. It seems to me, let it work out. That would be my idea. And plus the cap is, oh, this new cap, this extra cap is only for the adult only stores, which to me seem much preferable because they cannot get to the youth act. They used to have no access. So I don't see why it would be bad if you had a few more of the adult only ones. There, there are different ways of doing the cap. One might be an overall cap on the number of licenses. We have that. Over. We have that. Within the town. Another way would say a certain number of um, non-age restricted licenses and a certain number of adult only licenses. Right. And so you, there are different ways of having a cap. There are, but in the sample regs, the ones that we were sent from the MAHB from February, the only one that is listed there is to restrict the number of the adult only stores. No, that actually has both options well, list in the text. And it says well, if you it's very confusing we have a limit on the total number of tobacco establishments yeah, in our regulation. Yeah. So, so I guess so the way I'd interpreted it was do you want to look at that number and have a cap on the number that are adult only? Okay. So right now, Julie, we have 18 in town, correct? Two of which are adult only. So we have 16 of convenience stores, liquor stores, and two adult only. Mm -hmm. now, now, what do we do with those numbers? You could do nothing. And as Steve said, let the market figure that out a little bit. It, is there a value in having fewer adult only, um, adult only uh, retail outlets? And maybe there is, and you know, young people can't even walk in the door. Um, that's a value to having more. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Said if less. it swings in that direction, that might be a good thing. Yeah. Um, it does allow the sale of the higher dose uh, vaping. vaping, which 
would increase perhaps the supply in town, um, you know, via adults moving it on to young, younger people. So, you know, it's hard to know what the benefits and the harms are. And so the, one, one of the concerns might be with you and just seeing what the market have, does with this. If yeah, so the, one of the uh, concerns for the market is uh, the market tends to locate some of those um, establishments in areas where there is high minorities um, and also very closer to youth establishments. And so that is one of the concerns in literature saying that having the markets, markets dictate have a spatial configuration towards undesirable areas, you know. So that's the only concern mm. I have. Ah. How would this address that? I mean, I don't see how that would even affect it, how the cap would do anything. Well, you know, uh, let, let's, uh, let's assume the, uh, so we have a two, you know, right now two numbers. Let's let the markets dictate and then all the establishments will go into 18 or something. And all the 18 are some sort of a clustered somewhere, which is, we don't want that to happen. And uh, which is primarily in low income, minority, that type of establishment. No, but all the, all the, all the licenses are used. The 18, they're out there. They're all in the community already. Yeah, it's a so switching, right? I think right? to point, so um, you could look at where are the other um, tobacco licenses located? Are some of them near low income neighborhoods? And would someone um, want to flip over to an adult use establishment in any of those neighborhoods? Yeah. I'm not. I, um, but that so, might benefit, might, that might decrease the amount going to youth as opposed to. Well, it's interesting actually when I think about it. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, if you look at Cumberland Farms, which is um, located, well, okay, the Cumberland Farms that's near Colonial Village and some of the other apartment complexes there. What if for some reason they said they wanted to flip over to an adult use? It's interesting because actually in some ways that would probably decrease access to you, for youth because it would be over 21. But that's not increasing our cap that's keeping our cap at 18 and allowing someone to flip that's yeah I'm getting wait, wait, wait. let me explain so let me explain because that's what we're talking about so yeah. you long ago you we capped the number of the tobacco establishments in amherst i can't imagine that you're going to undo that and say oh let's have 20 instead no. so what we're let's talking not do that about is like rnp liquors and Big Guy Liquors and Cumbies and Hess, which isn't Hess anymore, they all have a regular tobacco license. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is, suppose any one of those places said, I've got this tobacco license, but now you've said you will allow six adult licenses in town out of the 18 or whatever. So I want to change my this is the only way i can see this happening i want to change my license to be an adult only and i'm not going to sell any of the other stuff i'm going to be an adult only store so i i believe this is what we're talking about we're not talking about adding more yeah. thank you okay i mean that's my read on it mm -hmm. we get them? Okay. We have a cap of 18 on the total, we have a cap of 18 total. right now. Mm -hmm. right. And we, someone could convert their existing license to an adult only. How do we, how do we get the wording for that? Why not? If you don't, if you I don't, don't think you do. And, or could we say that we have an existing cap of 18 and we will not allow more than four, five adults retail. Yes, we can do that, but why would we? Why would we? Why would we? I don't understand. <laughs> but, but yeah, you have to yeah. So the question is, do you want to keep, you, you, if you've got two now, then what you could do 
is you could cap it at two. You say, I don't want anything to change. Or you could say no cap. And if over time, any of these various entities want to open, switch over, get rid of all their other product and become an adult only store, they would be able to do that. Or you could say, we don't want too many of them. So we're going to choose maybe four can do that. If you do nothing, then as some people have said, that just allows the market to dictate. And I think one of the things to notice here is that the market has just hugely changed because <clears throat> an incredible amount of money was being made off of vape. Mm -hmm. So even the two stores that we have now, um, they will struggle to keep to keep going. I mean, I, I don't think the market is going to be there. I don't think for a lot of adult only. And the other thing you and that's the other thing is if there, if you don't feel like there's a way to make this decision, you just leave it as is no cap. And then two or three years from now when people see Oh, well, it turns out, then that can be done then. So we just keep it at the cap at 18 total whether it's adult or convenience store and see what happens just leave it as is i would be in favor of that person um question on the um just so i don't remember do we have the situation where if someone gives up their license we decrease the total number or do we have the, i just don't remember which yeah, that's what the, that's what it, they have 60 days so for example triangle street um, by the school, by the high school, mm -hmm. um, applied for his new tobacco permit in like November or something because they expire in December. Um, and then when all the vaping stuff was going on, he closed because he's like, well, that that's what I sell. Um, and so various people kept contacting me, including the owner of the building and him and then potential buyers. And I kept explaining, you know, as long as once the business is sold, that person applies within 60 days, they're going to get the permit. I mean, there's really the only reason you don't get that permit if someone sells their business is if they had any unpaid fines or anything like that. So someone did indeed buy the business. The buyer gets to get the permit. The buyer of the business. Yes, not yeah. the landlord, because it was really confusing. The landlord's like, well, can I have that permit? And so I had to go back over this a million times and it was like, no, it's actually the business that owns it. Okay. Yeah. So the, so the buyer of the business. Right. So we still Who, have that. Is there a buyer of that permit. business yet? Yes. He bought it. He applied for the license within the 60 days. He got his DOR. The only thing you really have to do is get your um, department of revenue license fill out the application and make sure that you're going to go by all the details. And he did not speak English well at all. So I worked with the um, tobacco person who does all the permitting over in town hall because he was saying, Julie, I'm not sure he understands. I said, okay, tell him we're going to give him the permit, but that what you want to do is have someone who speaks his language get on the phone and learn and also speaks English and learn what the responsibility is here. Cause I didn't want him to, you know, be taking on this responsibility and not really understanding. Mm. So that's what they were doing. So that's all been completed, I believe. But I also, I want to get back to Timothy's point, which is that the, the research very much reflects what he is saying. Um, I think it often applies more in urban areas. Um, because here, um, for example, if I think about, um, like for instance, the Hess that's not called Hess, maybe it's a Cumbies now that's maybe, on. Maybe. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's on on C -way, something like that. Uh, yeah. what, give yeah, us a location, it's, Julie. It's in South Amherst. What? Oh, the corner of Speedway. right in Mission Cantina. Speedway. Speedway, thank you, Speedway. So Speedway, for example, there are a lot of low-income folks who live on um, in Pomeroy Court um, and in other parts around there who go there and use that as a grocery store when they have to. Mm -hmm. um, but if it, if it changed to 
an, an, an adult only tobacco store, I'm not sure it would get the same type of traffic. I mean, I mean if we're talking not, about, yeah. What convenience store is going to change from an adult only? I mean, their well, business. And I actually, I mean, exactly. why would they do that? Well, the, well, it's a very good point. So the mom and pops, right? So the one that is um, Amherst Market, <clears throat> which is down um, near mom's house on College Street. Mm -hmm. You know that one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, I've had a lot of conversations with him. He makes most of his money off of his, the vape he was selling and everything. Well, so. Had the cucumber stuff underneath. Huh? He's the one who had the cucumber stuff underneath when my students went in. There you go. Yeah. So, and he, back in the day, people used to say they made a lot of money on their tobacco. Well, now they say we don't make much money on tobacco, on cigarettes, but we make bank on vape. So, you know, that ship has essentially sailed. Um, so the mom and pops like that and same thing on Triangle Street like even though he sells snacks to the kids and stuff He was really making his money on vape So what about the pizza place near the university? The, yes So right. they'd be willing to give up their food establishment to just be an adult retailer Well, for instance, well, for instance Sunset Bar and not bar Sunset Pizza Grill by the by UMass, she was totally into it. She felt like that's where she could make her money. So um, now I don't know really. So she would switch to an adult only. She adult. kind of wanted to figure out how she could do both. She wanted to rent another room in the building and yeah, do both. She, yeah, well, we, yeah. she's, she's got to be 50 know, feet Do I over. really think that many places would try to convert? I don't think so. I think that the two that are here, I've been to them recently. Um, you know, I, they both sell a lot of glass and bongs and paraphernalia, paraphernalia for smoking weed, which I think is probably cheaper at their stores than if you go to the, the fancy pot store. So maybe that's helped how they'll continue to make money. But I, I don't even necessarily feel like two are going to be very easily supported in town. So anyway, it. Well, and one thing in the town is there are very limited retail areas, as Steve was pointing out. So things can't just go into East Hadley Road, for example, or other places where there are lots of apartments. And right. So when I think about where the apartment complexes are, or in North know, Amherst, uh, Olympia, Oaks, you know, um, yeah, the ones that come to mind are sort of Cumbies and Speedway. Um, and that, that's kind of it. Um, it used to be the one at Triangle that could get Village Park and um, Olympia Oaks, but... Right. Well, there's something up in North Amherst, right? There's a... There's a company. There's a, well, there has been in North Amherst. Right? I have no idea what's... Oh, yes. No, you're right. So there's R&P Liquor. Because we find them one day. I remember finding them. You're right. Yes. <laughs> R&P Liquors. Vitrobas. Huh? Vitrobas. Vitrobas does not have a tobacco permit anymore. Yeah, it's in that group of stores there. Yeah. The yeah it's R&P Liquors. The guy, yeah. In the post office. Right, the post office. Yeah. Isn't R&P down in South Amherst? No, it's not R&P. It's, it, it's, it's, um, it's Big Guy Liquors. What? Big Guy. Is that the Big one that's guy. in that in yeah. that strip? Yeah. Okay. Yes, that rings a bell. Yeah. Um, so it seems like their primary, have stronger primary businesses mostly, except a few smaller mom and pop places. Yeah, exactly. Liquor businesses bigger, you know, chains like the Cumbies and Speedway, um, and then a few smaller ones. Cousins Market. Cousins, mm-hmm. There's 18 places in Amherst that sell tobacco. Yeah, I, I yeah. have Wolf, but I think I'm left out. No, 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 counting super, many, supermarkets. Yeah, how many liquor licenses do we have? But supermarkets can't sell if they have a pharmacy in them. Right, mm -hmm. the supermarkets. Big Y does, happen, it has one. They sell near their service desk. They do. Oh, right, right. Really? A shop that has a pharmacy, yeah.
That's in Hadley. I, I don't know how many liquor permits. That's, that's in Amherst. The big white, that's the piece that's in Amherst. Right, but yeah. it, Stop and Shop is in Hadley. Oh, stop and Shop. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, sorry. Um, okay, I'm, and I would personally be in favor of just keeping the total cap, not not discussing the distribution personally. But. I sort of agree with John. Does someone want to make any more discussion? Does someone want to make a motion? How about if we move to make the the cap, make a cap, and then we'll have a negative vote? That'd be amazing. We never have a negative vote. <laughs> this would be so good. I'm going to move that we institute a, a separate cap for adult only stores in Amherst. Need a second. Come on, second. Up. You're really doing this just to have a no, negative vote? It, it, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Outcome. All right, I'll second it. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor of having a separate cap for adult only tobacco retail, say aye. I can die. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, Tim. <laughs> Tim, for, yes. And, and neg nays. Nay. Hey. Three nays. Two ayes. Oh. Two eyes? Four eyes. Oh, no, one eye and four nays. That was the vote. I thought, I thought uh, Maureen, did you say eye or nay? Nay. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh yes. okay. Two nays and three eyes. Got it. No, no. No. Listen, the vote was to have a cap. The vote was to have a cap. The vote, the motion is to have a cap. Tim voted no. One person. Voted to yes to have a cap. Yes, excuse me. He voted yes to have yes. a cap. Anybody else vote yes to have a cap? No. No, I <laughs> okay. did not vote yes. Okay. <laughs> so one I four names. Thank you. Good. I would suggest that the wording of these caps and how um licenses are transferred and it seems very confusing about being a new applicant you know it almost should just say it only applies when someone is transferring a business because there really is no other way unless i'm missing something so i think looking at that language will be important yep and the and Massachusetts Association of Health Board confused me completely on that section. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, this is very exciting. You've made three decisions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what document are we working on from a wordsmithing perspective? Are we not there yet? Well, I think now you want to start your wordsmithing, right? Which, mm -hmm. which one? Which? I think I really think it Maureen's because I know it is. It does have the highlighting and everything, but it has so many good changes from what from the March version uh, that we're going to have to go through one by one. If we but don't, both say March. They don't do, but mine says Maureen five eight twenty twenty. Okay. On oh, the I'm file sorry. name. On the file name. On the file name. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Um. And you didn't change the, the highlights. I what? Here's my the, highlights were green. Mine are yellow. They show up yellow on my computer. They sh yeah, they show so up. They're yellow ones. They're green ones, and they're blue ones. It's very. Oh, blue. I'm sorry. I didn't look yeah. deeper. They're multiple colors. <laughs> oh boy! But this so is the Steve, most recent thing Steve, we have. Is this correct? Steve had this. Steve had taken a pass through. I took a pass through adopting some of the things that Nancy had made suggestions about and some of the naming. Okay. And then also looked at MAHB and, tra and added a few things and even left two, even left sections side by side so we could look at them side by side. Cause I was getting very confused. I know it makes it a confusing document. It took me like, an, it takes a half an hour to figure out where you are and what you're talking yeah. about, but we can do it. 
<laughs> so, uh, what do you think, Julie? Because the unannotated one is definitely easier to read for sure. But that doesn't include Maureen's recent. Edit. No, no, unfortunately not. Yeah. Well, why don't we go with the one that's got colors in it? If it's the most recent. Yeah. Well, it's not so much, most recent. Yeah, it's the one that has the most combined suggestions in it. So maybe you do want to go with that. Um, uh, I mean, why not? We have to start somewhere. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what's not in there is the supporting evidence that Nancy redid. Um, oh. I had a couple of typos on that. That's in a separate document. Yeah, I had some typos oh, on that. I'm so, so confused here. <laughs> I can't figure out which is which, and I have my iPad, my computer, and some printed out things, and I don't have a color printer, so. Oh. So, okay, so there's, what? That, okay, in the second email Julie sent out, there's tobacco regs draft 3.0 and tobacco sales regs draft 5.0. Which one is it? I think it's the None. five. No, no. Well, no you, you don't sent, mean, Maureen, you sent yours separately. Well, I did. I think Julie sent it out as in that as well. I think I just sent out the uh, um, separately the God, I got, I got supporting it. documents. Let me just double check. So it's, I mean, what I, if, if I were to take the three documents that came in these combined emails, one is tobacco sales regs drafts 0306 2020 plain text. Then there's tobacco sales regs draft 0306 2020 annotated. I'm reading the file names. And then there's tobacco sales regs draft 0508 2020 Maureen. That's, That's the one. That's I'm not seeing the, I can't find, I just, okay. Does someone want to forward it to Nancy? Yeah, yeah. forward it to me so that I. All right, it's the middle one of Julie's second email. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Oops. Thank you. And separately, we could talk about the, um, Supporting evidence, if you want. Yeah, this. I would leave that for last, maybe. You know, because that's just that's just cement. And well, I yeah, and I did want to say that Amherst has like the most robust and long regulations for everything, always. <laughs> and so all the supporting ed evidence and whereas it's wonderful, it demonstrates all the research, but. It's probably not where you want to spend all your energy. Yeah, no, so ours is that shorter one. It's but, shorter than MAHB's, actually. Yeah, it's much shorter, and it has the most recent yep. that we could find. Okay, good. Much shorter. Supporting so, evidence. You're talking about the supporting evidence. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different format, and it's a little shorter than MAHB. So, who's going to keep the, um, or who's going to, well, edit something, whatever we're going to edit. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try and do that. So do we want to, do we, do we want, do we want to do these stupid, I mean, these definitions, or do we want to go to the, the context? text first. I think we can start at the beginning. Yes, just start at the beginning and work your way down. Start at the beginning. Hmm. So we have the statement of the purpose. Mm -hmm. Can I make a suggestion? Um, maybe someone could share the document to everyone so we are all on the same page. Yeah, hey, I there. yeah, I can do that if you want. Yeah. Good idea. Yep, let's share that. Literally on the same page. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay. Just a sec here. Let me just get into it. Good suggestion. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get rid of this one.
Sorry, just a sec here. Why can I? Here we go. Okay, now. How's that? Can you see? Looks good. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's marine annotated. So this is the one. I'm just trying to make it a little smaller so I can still look at the other things that I have on the screen. Uh, don't, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Okay. I got, who's doing the edits? Nancy. Nancy. I'll throw, this is a typo. Number one under the purpose. Yes. D reduce the number of youth who use tobacco and look at, delete the S and so not uses, okay. but use. Well, I can't do anything with this. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'm just doing it on paper and pen. That's right, that's good. You have it printed out? I yeah. have it printed out. You're gonna do it paper and pen. Wow. I'm a paper person. Yeah, we yes. yes. Old. I think <laughs> if I'm not the oldest, I'm close to the oldest. Old. <laughs> <laughs> paper and pen. Yeah, not the competition. I'm also a visual person. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the whole supporting evidence thing is gonna be replaced by the other document, right? No, just some additions, I think. Oh, no, is this it's a replacement because it has though. It was a replacement. Oh, okay, okay. I had a few um, little typos on that. I don't know who I should wish if you want to deal with those. Just give them to me. Said that, yeah. Say so email them to Nancy. All right, I will. Can I do that? Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah. Okay. So we're not going to discuss the supporting evidence because we're not reading the document. This, yeah, that has too many changes. Right, okay. so authority. Okay. So John, you'll send me the edits to the supporting they're document. Just, they're just typos, just tiny. Typos that are separate. Okay. So now we're on the authority. I mean, that's just plain. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have to do anything with that. No. Okay, definitions. Delt only retail stores, so then it's establishment for two years, space and other businesses. Okay. 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 This is really where we should be looking at the MAHB. Yes, that's Just what I'm looking at. I was, yeah, side by side. I can do I that. an extra sentence at the end of that that says, as of the date effective, the no new adult shall be located within a certain number of feet of retailer with a tobacco product sales. Yes. Right but what, definition. Yeah, but that is a bad idea, okay? I, don't, I can't believe these people are lawyers. I mean, this is a definition. <laughs> yeah. That, that's Regulation, so that has to be put separately under these in the section that applies to the adult only store. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good point. I agree. That's weird. So the MA, the one has that line. Wow. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Seems dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I think we basically do want to go with the MEHB yeah. uh, language, you know, unless there's a good reason not to, because yeah, sure, they, they have they have they have tried to do exactly what we want to do. That is conform mm -hmm. to the state regs, and so mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to do the MEHB. Well, unless there's a reason not to, like there was a reason for that period. 
like establishment should not allow anyone under the age of 21 to work there. And I think that comes up in the regulations. Yes. Too. Yes. So do we want to stress that twice or just leave it under, under, under the regulation? It's not a definition of an adult only store. I don't think it's like, no. that's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's a blunt, blunt wrap. That's, is, are these largely from the mass? I haven't read them both. And if they're, if they're not highlighted, they're from our, our current regulations. Yeah. Right. Which agree with this other mass thing too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we so want the adult only retail tobacco store and but not have the establishment shall not allow anyone under 21 to work and we don't want the feet in here. We want the feet in the exclusion later on. Yeah, just go with what we have right now. It looks go good. with what's up there in yellow and turquoise. Uh, yep. Okay. So you have a printout of this thing that has colors in it, right, Nancy? Yes. That's what you're editing, right? Yes. So it must be shaded on your printout. Yeah, it's just gray because I don't have a color. Printout. Right, but you can see the strike screws, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's that. That's the one. Where nobody's suggesting an edit to what's there now. Yeah, one of the things, very minor in terms of editing, is I had put in uh, bolded text whenever there was a definition in the, in the definitions, but it's obtrusive and it, the people didn't want it. So if you see bolding, I think you want to get rid of it. I'm bold. Yeah. Yes. Unless people feel differently. But at the time it was like yeah. tobacco products was bolded a hundred times throughout the text. It was distracting. Because <laughs> that was our new language, language a million iterations ago. Okay, blunt wrap. These are all just, just okay. from before. It's all from before. No Characterizing flavor. And distinguishable. I'm looking at the, I, I'm going to call the mass M-A-B. I'm going to call that one Cheryl's. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so this is where we, we no longer exclude the So that so that's the same as the one in Cheryl's. Yes, it is. It, it should be, yeah. Yes. And then child resistant packaging because that was said we needed to have that. It is. It is now in the. It, it is now. So it, it, ignore my comment there because it, it's needed. It is mentioned down below. Okay. I didn't see it in that it, order, but. Yeah, I'm quite sure it's in down near the end. Um, there's a, I can't. Do they call it something else? No, it was it was it was in the part about liquid nicotine sales. Oh, yeah. no, but let's leave that definition there. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to leave it there anyway. No. So. Okay, cigar. No. That that the Cheryl's thing has a longer definition of cigar. Uh, I think. Uh. It has, uh, yeah, it's a di slightly, it adds that is readily usable, in a readily usable state immediately when removed from its packaging without modification, preparation, or assembly required as in a kit or roll your own package and is not otherwise defined as a cigarette. And then and she add, and the, the tobacco leaf in it want wraps for the purpose of this regulation. Yeah. Which definition should we go with? No objection to the more to the longer one. I just thought it didn't seem necessary, but there's probably a reason for it. So put the longer one in. Okay. Component part. Uh,
remember if it's not bolded or, or highlighted, it's it's our current regulations mm -hmm. and it's consistent with the MAHB. Coupon. Oh, so it's okay. So the coupon is identical. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all right. Use the grip. Uh, I'm just looking at it. So we have e-cigarette and then we have electronic nicotine delivery system. Yeah, I think maybe the NMBHB didn't need the e-cigarette because it is mentioned in the other one. Right. So So it's okay to admit it as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. Would um, I lo you lost me on that e-cigarette. We don't need to define e-cigarette well, because it's part of something else. Let's see. Oh, it's a part of a nicotine delivery product? Is yes. that what it is? Okay. Fine. Electronic cigarette, yeah. Electronic cigarettes, electronic cigars, electronic cigarillos. The big, the big discussion early on was that some public health people did not like ends because when they, when people see it, they look at it as a cigarette substitute quitting cigarette smoking. And that's why there was, you know, so almost two years ago, there was all this discussion on using ends versus e-cigarette. So just leave the electronic nicotine delivery system. Oops. Yeah, yeah, and remove the e-cigarette. E okay. I just moved education in yeah. because it was <laughs> right. was in the wrong order. What? The alphabetical. <laughs> Good. I can't believe you have to define the word, meanings of certain words in here. Weird. You really have to define employee and employer, isn't and there? It's, it, and it's totally circular. You know, it's completely circular definitions. Yeah. That is strange. But I mean, some lawyer. Uni universally accepted definitions of employee employer. Wow. <laughs> so are they defined in all the food regs too and all that? So they must be. That's a good point. I don't know. <laughs> this seems weird to me. Define employee. Same thing with distinguishable. Isn't that in the dictionary? I, mean, I think in legal documents, they would like to define how we are conceptualizing it. So how we are what? Legal documents. So how are we using that employee? You know? Are we mm -hmm. using definition from some other place? Or how are we? I mean, that's what they want to define it first. Right, you know? but, right. But um, I guess my point is, it seems like there's, yeah. yeah. What's meant by individual? What's meant by human? What's meant by <laughs> tobacco? Uh, what's meant by? I guess we tobacco that. product didn't change. A flavored product, healthcare institution. Why is that yellowed? That was an addition to in the current M MAHB that was wasn't in our regulations from two thousand and fifteen okay. or whatever. But why why it's there, I don't really know. Keep it or get rid of it. Keep it. Yeah. Keep it. Okay. Liquid nicotine container. Is this in the state begs state one? Cheryl's, as you say. Oh, jeez. Uh, what's the blue highlight? It is in there. Yeah. Makes sense to use it then. And I think that in, in one of the earlier things that came from the state, it said we had to have that in it. Mm -hmm. Well, this yeah. is a non-discount problem. That's right from the, the Charles, right. I assume. Sounds fine. So, yeah, that, where are we? 
minimum legal age that we're taking out because it's 21 all over. Town and state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nicotine delivery product. That's not in MAHB and it seems to be covered In tobacco pens, product, whatever, or no, tobacco product. It's in tobacco product. So I agree with you, Maureen. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh, okay. Next. So there's electronic nicotine delivery system, and then there's nicotine delivery product we had in the past, but it's covered by tobacco product. Right. It, yeah. Got it. Product containing or made or derived from tobacco or nicotine that is intended for human consumption. Okay. Good. Check that. Yeah, I'm reading the state one here. The Ready to move on? Yes. Yeah. So we don't need the non adult only because we have non age restricted. Non age restricted. Okay, to move on then, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So these are just, these next few are not changed in either, they're, they're basically what was in our 2015 and no change in the um, MAHP. Oops. Wait a minute, what, wait a minute. Go back to say, uh, I just check, schools, public or private? Go back up there. Schools, public or private, no disappears. It's fine to leave it in, it's just pretty obvious. And okay. It's but there's a mention of preschool somewhere in the document, but I don't know. Yeah, it's not in the definition here at MHB, but Yeah. Is it oh it's been taken out of MHB? Like how far away they need for it to be from yeah. Do you think we need to put preschools in there? There might be some ambiguity about daycare and so on, but uh, uh, I don't know. In 2015, we had that same discussion. <laughs> you have a good memory. Hmm. Well, you know, there were things that kept getting bounced around. Do you remember that, Julie? You know, I'm, I'm getting it confused with all the marijuana discussions I had about. Um, well, the marijuana discussions were very similar to the discussions about the preschool. They were like, okay. Yeah. What you like. Well, I think, let's see, so, so, for example, with, the idea so preschool if you look at that speed mark 
Montessori has a preschool down there, but it's yeah. far enough away. Yeah. I don't know. I don't feel like you need preschools. Okay. Myself. I mean, we're talking about keeping youth from smoking. You're not going to walk over to the store. No, when we had that, when we had that discussion back then, it was the advertisement. But now, advertisement is being a little more restricted. That's right. The advertisement that we didn't want even preschool children to see the ads and the pictures mm -hmm. because yeah. it would set an image in their mind. Okay. Yeah. That was a discussion in 2015. Yeah. Um. So this, the word schools is used somewhere where this definition matters, obviously, later on? Well, it's yeah. the definition actually, it, the, 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 the word schools appears in the regulations, yes. And, and also with this definition right there in the regulations. <laughs> just this definition. It doesn't go into, you know, the state, I just have to deal with this. So there isn't any use of the word preschool per se. No. It's, it's early no. education and care facilities, EEC. It's the Department of Early Education and Care Facilities. Um, early education and care. So uh, okay. I don't know whether you want to mention anything. Or not. Just. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Smoke constituent, is that the next one? Yeah. Well, that's, that's no change. Yeah, no changes. Okay. Yeah. No, no one wants to change it. And it's just what we already have. Smoking. MAP has a longer definition of smoking bar. They sure do. <laughs> And you might want to include that. Um, yeah. some, do, you want, do you want to read it? Or you can I, could, it? I could read it. Smoking bar, an establishment that one, exclusively occupies an enclosed indoor space and is primarily engaged in the retail sale of tobacco products for consumption by customers on its premises. Two, derives revenue from the sale of food, alcohol, or other beverages that is incidental to the sale of tobacco product and prohibits entry to a person under 21 years of age. Three, prohibits food or beverage not sold directly by the establishment from being consumed on the premises. Four, maintains a valid permit for the retail sale of tobacco product as required to be issued by the town of Amherst and five, maintains a valid permit issued by the Department of Revenue to operate a smoking bar. Smoking bar shall include, but not be limited to, those establishments that are commonly known as cigar bars and hookah bars. It sounds pretty included. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pretty clear. I guess if we're going to ban them, we should probably define them. Yes. I think yeah. it would be helpful. I mean, I definitely get two or three calls a year for people asking about wanting to open a hookah bar or a smoking bar. And so it just, it might be good. It's to have more inclusive. Yeah. 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 I always so somebody, somebody decided it needed all those definitions. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Might as well include it. Back on answers. Same as the states now. Well, Cheryl. Right. Yeah. Now, now this morning, I, or whenever it was today, um, <laughs> Nancy, did I hear them say that at the tobacco conference that tomorrow they were going to post some more information on the tobacco website? I wrote down which website. And there might be some more language for flavor enhancer. I oh, think so. I think so, Julie. I wrote those notes in the car. <laughs> no, well, I, I remember that. Yeah. You do? Yeah, so I'll check tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Okay. And then you can always, if it looks good, you could and, add it. And then they said later that it might not be out tomorrow. So keep your... Okay. Your okay. All right.
Okay, and then tobacco products. Do we have the whole state definition of Cheryl yeah. definition there? I think with that addition of the turquoise part, we do. Yeah, I think it's the same. Sounds good. Oh, oh excuse me. And then vending machine. Okay, and then, so we're set on the definitions. Yeah. So now ours goes completely different from... Yes. <laughs> here on in. And this is where I was just getting... Yeah, remember we made the decision early on, supposedly for clarity, to separate so yeah. three categories: all stores, just adult only, and just uh, and not. March, stores. we made that. In March, see, March a year ago. Two thousand and nineteen, and right. meticulously went through it. Yeah. For those, my thought was that first statement was so confusing that. It, yeah. We could simplify it. It could be simplified because after all, there's plenty of explanation down below about what goes on in those stores and can yeah. what can and can't go on. So I think the shorter one is good. The green one it, it highlighted in my text. So, so just wait a minute. I don't. So the seed says or in capital letters, the town of Amherst permits tobacco sales. Use that shorter one sentence. And yeah. the preamble. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, a preamble and just use that one sentence. Yeah, I agree. Simpler. Oh. Non age restricted and adult only. Sounds good. Because now those 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 names really do describe it, whereas before it was really confusing. Really confusing. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't have that on my document here. So you're looking at Maureen's. Um... Yeah, I don't have that on the printed out one here. Let me just copy it. The town of Amherst permit. Uh oh. You sh okay, then you're not working on the printed out one that we've been talking about. <laughs> I have up until here, but it's just. <laughs> Hmm. Well, was there any other? I don't know. So, All right. I can but, email you that after the meeting if you want, uh, yeah. Nancy. I mean, the only previous green, Nancy, was educational institution. I, you know, I, I just keep going. I, I'm, I'm just too confused right now. Just keep going. Everything else was the same until this right here on this document that I have. Hmm. You sure? What yeah. is the document? Is the one that says Marine annotated? The one that's. I, I don't know. I don't know. I printed this out at home. Oh, <laughs> so. What's at the top of your page, Nancy? It probably just was Steve's thing. I, I, I just keep going. Just keep going. Well. I, but, I, I just, I'm too confused right now. You just, want me to keep track of the I'm fine. Just, just from fine. here? Just keep going. I'm fine. Okay. I'm, I'm going to snail mail. I'm going to put in the mail to you or in your, are you going to be, I'm going to put in your mailbox at home, a color coded Maureen copy. Okay. So you can use that to compare to the notes you've taken tonight. Okay. Well, a simple answer, uh, Nancy, in the next line. The regulation that applies both. To both. Yeah, that's exact the same thing. What does it say exactly? Non-age restricted retail. Yeah. Yes, it says regulations that apply to both non-age. Okay, you got it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> Straight up. Weird. I think I did those all at the same time. You know, they follow four. <laughs> five. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's just because I'm going between different documents. Oh, God. Oh. 
Okay, just put it in my mailbox, Julie. I'm, I've just hit such confusion here. Okay. And I'm in, I, well, Nancy, do you want me to keep track of what we're changing I, or not? Okay, I'm okay to hear. It's a preamble. Okay. Well, somehow I have something completely different now. I don't know. Maybe you've mixed up some of your pages. I might have. Do you want to take a break and Maureen do a section now? Yeah. It's okay, just, it's hard. It's, it's hard. It's really yeah. hard. Yeah. yeah, and as I said, I'm in this hotel room. Right, you don't, you're not an op oh. <laughs> optimal place. <so. laughs> okay. So... That section is everything like, else is the same here. Former D one. I don't know. Well, that's part, that part would be, but it's the green highlighting that seems to be different. But so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Let Maureen will take over. I'll give you a color copy. We've got the recording. You have we have a whole month to get this, you know, tightened up. Great work so far, everybody. Okay. And the next one is just the name again, so. Yeah, I have. And the minimum age is straightforward now. Oh, we've got that. The turquoise and yellow. The yeah. Turquoise. Okay. And then B, B is to be deleted altogether. Right. Got that. Okay. Okay, now sale of tobacco pro products is prohibited. Flavored. You yeah. wish. <laughs> yeah, flavored. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have that. And then it says no person shall sell or distribute cause to be sold, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, an applicant got that. Okay, got that. Yeah, it's all the same now. I don't know. Well, there are too many changes in this section. Right. So C, you've got a bit of a change there, right? right? Applicant can be asked to provide right. evidence. Provide evidence that a legitimate business transfer or business purchase has taken place. Yeah, I've got that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Accept that change. Yeah. And then a tobacco product. We have age of 21. We've crossed out minimum sales. Got that. Wait a minute now. Times. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's a simple change. That's now, the signage stuff. There was all that new signage stuff in that presentation today. Well, yeah, and that is, I think, in A. But then we also have what are B and C, which come from older versions, I think. It, it's really confusing. And part of the signage, like the cigar signage, I think that's a local, local regulation, not a state regulation, but I'm not sure. Uh, no. We've never done any that were like our own. They always came from the state. Well, that's why I couldn't tell. Um, as far back as, I, you know. You know, is, do, do the current signage uh, regulations, requirements, don't mention cigars at all? And does that mean we don't need those or are those in some other law that we should be paying attention to still? Oh. Huh. So the and, 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 the, and in MAHB, it seems like the cigars are more of a locally controlled thing, the pricing and all of that of those cigars. Um, because it doesn't fall under the fines, like the $1,000 $3,000, $5,000 structure. It just seems like it's not in the same oh. ballpark. Yeah. yeah um, so that section is much different in Carol's than ours. 
Well, the A is, I think, A from Cheryl's. A is the same. Well, you know, it's interesting. So the, the cigar stuff, it definitely came from the state. You know, that's where we got the language from. That's why it's in there. I, t t today at the conference, there was something about how uh, I felt like there was this moment where mm, somehow it felt like they were referring to, oh, I know what it is. So the state law, for instance, um, refer it doesn't really say anything about cigars the new state vaping law and i feel like the mahb sample just doesn't really deal with the cigar stuff no they, talk, they talk about it a little somewhere i can't remember yeah, anywhere. Yeah. well if they do yeah <coughs> it's, under, it, it's under like the local regulations uh, sort of section are uh, under like when it talks about the penalties and things in the in the it's a separate thing and the, and the you, like you can't sell cheap cigars singly or two at a time or something yeah you know we could leave the signage part for now and we could double check with Cheryl Sabara okay also, I have those notes as in the slides. Remember, they pointed out, but as I said, my notes are in the car. Um, she had this sign, this sign, this sign, this sign, mm -hmm. and that you can all get it from the clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of glazed over that. There's because no cigar sign in the clearinghouse <laughs> at the present time. Oh, really? Did you go to the clearinghouse? I, I thought I did. Oh, good for you. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, oh, I could double check that. I, it was a while ago that I was looking for this. Yeah, I can email Cheryl. There were five or six points, and it was like sensation. It was da 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 da. da. I took notes. I took notes, but as I said, my notes are. So yeah, no, I got bored of the signage. I was like, oh my god. Because, <laughs> well, partly because since we're part of a tobacco control coalition it's it's the inspectors they get all that signage they deliver it they make sure everybody's got it all up so mm -hmm. you know, i don't pay that much attention to it i felt like that part was kind of point there were a lot of inspect of tobacco inspectors on that call and mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of pointed towards them but i will email cheryl tomorrow and ask her specifically about that okay okay And I'll get the notes out of my car in the morning. At 5 a.m. when I bring my husband to the hospital. 5.30. Honey, I think I focus on yourself tomorrow. Which, which uh, hospital? He's having it done at the Faulkner, which, which, is, is, in, which is part of the Brigham. But oh yeah? it's a robotic hemi knee replacement. Oh, yeah. And he gets discharged in the afternoon. He has to be there at 5.30. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's why we're here today. A J job for the knee. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and mine was close to the knee. with that close. knee. So, and they just do part of it. So I drop them oh. up, and then I'll work on this, and then I'll pick them up. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Hmm. Okay, now. Where are we? So as long as, as, long as we go to buyer identification, right? Yep. Are we there already? What ha what's four? I, I think I missed four that. Is, four is the signage. Oh, four in, in is the, the signage. current number. Okay, five is. Five. Okay, signage. All right, I'm, I'm with you. That 
makes sense to me. Now we're going to see a number of cases where smoking bars is struck out. And I would just point out that nowhere in these, this draft, is there a statement that smoking bars are not allowed in that. Yeah, we have to find out where to put that. Yeah. So we still shouldn't strike it. Still, there's no reason to put it there. It should uh, definitely be struck right. out. But we also have to say that we're not going to have them. Maybe in that those general statements that follow these separate regs. I think it probably should be under the part that says, yeah, the the uh, the uh, re um, regulations that apply to all types of stores. Well, or the town wide or something. There's something. Yeah, yeah, maybe down in the bottom. Yeah, Let's see. Either that or have it after the preamble and before both non-adult and. Um, yeah, it could go in there. Yeah. So that it would be a statement B after the preamble under the regulations. <laughs> Smoking bars are not permitted in the town of Amherst. Mm -hmm. and then, you. Well, it's it would go under B, right? Regulations. Well, I don't know. I think it might be in the preamble, maybe. The, the thing is, a preamble, you know, is supposed to be like an interjection of text that is not a rule or anything. Mm. Well, that, that's why I'd say make it be under, before we get to regu uh, the others, just make a statement that. Oh, okay, okay. It would be right. a, B, and then B becomes C. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Well, isn't okay. a smoking bar by definition adult only? I'm just wondering if it fits. It would be if it were allowed. It would be if it, yeah. Right, right. Right. All right. And you have to have some place where it says smoking bars are not permitted in Amherst. Mm, that's yeah. what's missing right now. That's. I yeah. think right up at the top there is a good place. Right. So okay. that, and then we go into the other two that are permitted. Okay, good. And tobacco handlers. Now this this should all be deleted oh. the part that that's from before because you Maureen you put in some stuff here that's more applicable right this Yeah part. I put in Nancy's revision of tobacco Yeah 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 Yeah, yeah good So just uh, we do have this Later on in the section D, regulation specific, it now says to adult only, but we're going to change that to non age restricted. Is that correct? I mean, age restricted. Adult only became age restricted, right? No, adult only still is adult only. Adult only. Okay. Not, it's non age restricted and adult only. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which by definition is age restricted. Yeah, <laughs> adult only right. is age restricted. I okay. wouldn't call it that, but. Okay. So, I mean, you could put the smoking bar thing under that section. But. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are, can you just back up a teeny bit? All right, I'm, I'm moving all these things around, but now I'm confused again. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really apply there. Either. Now this all seems good about the tobacco handlers, except the one thing is to put a note in here under regulations that is unusual in the document. Just a, it's all true, but um, you know we could yes, put a lot of notes I in about changed, why we do things. I changed that in something else I sent out, but now I can't find. Well, let me find. Yeah, I don't know that I kept up with that. Um, I changed it. Uh, let me get. Ah. Uh, yeah, the note might not make sense. It makes sense, but I mean, we could say it every, everywhere, boy, the rationale. I it in the last thing I sent out. Um, yeah, I have that. What you did is you put three. 
Yeah. The tobacco sales permit holder must keep on file a copy of each employee's signed tobacco handler's quiz. And then you did an A, the purpose of the tobacco handler's quiz is to, one, promote knowledge of town and state tobacco regulations, two, prevent illegal tobacco product sales, and three, increase compliance with the regulations restricting, restricting youth access and exposure to tobacco and nicotine delivery products, thus increasing potential violations and penalties. And I sent this out to you guys, or Nancy did, I can't remember which way, in an email that, that um, was it's called Nancy's Suggestions. Yeah, I think I missed that change. Yeah. That's not a change. That's just the same language. Here. It's the same thing, but it's 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 under tobacco handlers. The note becomes three, and it says tobacco sales permit holder must keep on file a quiz, and then it says a the purpose of the tobacco handlers is to, and the note is one two three. Okay. Yeah, the word note is not used. Note is taken away, and right. it's put in. I guess most of the thing of the purpose is, is in the first paragraph or the first page. Do we want to add this here? Well, it's so that they know what the quiz. Yeah. Besides the quiz, why are we taking the quiz? But you yeah. can say that about every statement in this document, you know, why are we doing it? What's the rationale? So I'm just saying it's not, it's perfectly valid, but it is unusual. But yeah, that's true. You, yeah. You don't necessarily have the purpose, yeah. Mm -hmm. It could just be, must keep on file a copy. What I could do is put it in the quiz so that when they read it, yeah, I'll put sure. it. Yeah. Good, good. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And I'll have to redo the quiz because we have new stuff. Yeah, there was a couple things about the quiz that I question yeah yeah like one of the penalty thing questions well, yeah because i did that i did the quiz way back in february <laughs> yeah. okay all right okay that's where i'll put it so that when people take the quiz good and i tried to model the quiz out of the david offler offler's wood stove quiz so it's really an educational piece sure sure yeah you did a nice job with that yeah. yeah so i guess remember last year that guy who came in and said well i have a new person and he's not familiar so new people should be familiar before they start selling with the regulations remember oh, the yeah. long and dance last year Yes, was that with R and P liquors? Did I just yeah. lose everybody here? On what? I don't. can you hear us? I can hear you, but I don't mm -hmm. think I'm seeing the right thing anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh. Everybody's oh. over to the right on my computer. So I'm seeing I can everybody, so I can see the document. Not his, not his screen. You can't see the document anymore, Maureen. No. Oh. Um. Did you change to? I didn't think I did anything. I did move my trackpad around a little bit, which might have. Oh, well, well, that did it. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You shouldn't have lost it. Yeah. I do have this copy, so I I can <laughs> kind of keep up. So with if you guys. if you go on the right top corner, there is a toggle between uh, swap shared screen with video. Maybe you can bring it back to shared screen. Oh, I think maybe I got it here. Oh, I have to just figure out. Uh, there's you. No, that's not it. Should be on the top uh, right corner. There are two icons. Uh, one on the left is uh, ready for toggle. This is this is beyond my zooming capacity here. I think I'm getting there. I just need to enlarge this window. Uh, it just shrank to nothing. But it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I just, like I said, I need to stretch it out a little here.
Man. Why don't we keep going? I, I, I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So free distribution, that is all the same, right? Yeah. No person shall. Yeah, that is the same. Okay. Out of package sales is the same. <laughs> Incorporates attorney general. That came from Cheryl, right? But it's not new particularly. Right. And this next part is just the rename the okay, so convenience much. stores and then says that they can sell electronic nicotine delivery systems with low, you know, the mm -hmm. nicotine content. Regulation specific to non-age restricted retail establishment, right? Yep. So we got a change we need to make. So no non-age restricted retail may sell or distribute or cause to be sold or distributed one e-cigarettes as defined herein. Didn't we just delete the definition of e-cigarettes? The ends one. What? Or should we just put the well that 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 was is being replaced by no non-age restricted retail establishment shall sell an electronic nicotine delivery system with nicotine content greater than 35 milligrams per milliliter. Yes, it says replaces. So that, 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 that. Oh, yeah, oh. I, I left them both <clears throat> here so we would see them. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I always hate to get rid of stuff because I forget what I, <laughs> where, why I was doing yeah. this. Yeah, okay, got it. Well, you can you know, just. Okay. Do strikeouts, but yeah. strikeout. I, I just figured that out later in the process. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the only thing under non adult only. Is there anything else that goes there? I didn't think of anything. Restricted entry. Okay. Yeah, so the most of the regulations do apply to both kinds of stores, but this right. is the short part that distinguishes where there really is a difference between the two stores. Yeah. Right. Adult only, restricted entry, required sign. This is right from Cheryl, this part. Yeah. And then look when Nitrogen, uh, nicotine sales. This is where, then the next section is where child resistant packaging is mentioned. Sure. Now, in the liquid nicotine sales, now these fines are different. Yeah, they, these came from an earlier. I think last November's um, uh, you know the act oh God, whatever the la one of the last acts were from the state on t on tobacco or nicotine it I have all that stuff at home but it said you needed to include this do you remember Is that before the it, it was uh, maybe it was it was last spring that something came out. So early 2019, something had come out, and I pulled it right out of whatever the state said back then that you had to have. But I have all that document, those documents at home. So what what is that? Has that been updated in the MAHB? 
Let me see if I can find which one. Are you talking about liquid nicotine sales? Yeah. It just said, actually the um, MAHB says now permit holders who sell liquid nicotine containers must comply with provision 310, I guess. Blah, blah, blah. It, I don't think it has a separate fine structure. I think it might have changed, Nancy, just because okay. with the new then okay. But that was in one of the older pieces. Gotcha. Gotcha. I guess it I guess there it just in MHB, it comes under out of package sales and it inclu includes a statement about liquid nicotine sales. Out of package. Oh, I see. You might need to look at that a little more closely. Yeah, well, we should look under 301, I mean, So just move it and use the one that comes from the new Cheryl. Yes. Yeah, just go with her, their L. Yeah. Out of package sales. Yeah. Somehow I missed that. When I, I tried to compare these two, but I kind of missed that difference. Now, their whole out of package sales. Okay, I'm, I'm lost here. Morning, can you, oh, okay. They don't list any, any longer a separate heading. Right. For liquid nicotine sales, but include some of this information in under out of package sales. Right. So should we just use their out of package sales? I mean, I might, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because even the, the enforcement, I don't know if that's changed either, that Amherst. Yeah, so we'll just use theirs, L. Yeah. Okay. So I want to do a check-in. It's seven o'clock. Yeah. Um, what, what do you all feel about being able to get through the whole thing? Or? I'm sort of reaching my limit right now. And there's some. Yeah, there's quite a bit of the violations are complicated. The vi violations are also tricky, I think. Well, what we should do is look at the violations under the new thing, because that's all new. This 1,000, this 
do we want to keep it? They talked about you could keep this 100, 500, and whatever for anything except selling to youth. Is that what came out in the webinar today? It actually, I think, distinguished between the things uh, mandated by the state and versus the things that are separately done for the town. And, right. Um, and so that's where that divide is. Like for. And I, I really can't do that tonight. <laughs> no, I think, I think this is pretty good. Yeah. This is fantastic because what you could do is, you know, you could get it all clean and fresh and, and confirmed for like the first X amount of pages. Um, you made those three difficult decisions. So that's fantastic. And what would happen is by the time the next meeting rolled around, you know, questions could be asked of Shell, and then also um, they are going to be posting something. Um, you know, and often you're right, they say it's tomorrow, but it's a little longer than that. <laughs> um, uh, and then apply fresh mind to the rest of it. Uh, Maureen, I'll work on all of this and I'll put mine like in just blueprint and send it to you. Not okay. highlighted or anything. Blue, instead of using black, I'll use blue so you know which one is mine. Okay. No highlight, just. Okay, and I'll try to go through it and prove. I'm not the best, I'm a, not a great proofreader. I see what I want to see. <laughs> I know, I know, especially because we've been dealing with this for so long. Well, yeah, longer than I have. Um, but yeah, if you put that out to all of us, we can take a look at it. Okay. And then that way, so maybe some goals for the next meeting is there would be one marked up document and it could have just one color maybe yeah well, one color you know because a lot of the things you've accepted so mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter whose is whose it could all just be whatever but i'll they, just do it in blue font not highlighted or anything does that make sense instead of black font or it's just if it just has the, the date or the okay. date. Okay, I'll just do the date. Okay. We should be okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, once you print it, then you don't know. This, um, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Unless you put it on the top somewhere. Okay. You put it in the title. Can maybe circulate it, you know. Okay. I'll work on it more well before time. the meeting and people could um could just get back to um, either Nancy or Maureen with, with typos, um, maybe. Yeah, and John, you're going to send the typo correction to me for the um, mm -hmm. supporting evidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if anything is sent to everyone, you might, if you, if you know how to use the BCC, that prevents inadvertent um, round robins. You know, people can only reply to the sender that way. Oh, that's a great idea because things don't have to go through me. The whole concept is just that, you know, you can't be having discussion. That's right. all. Right. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to end. <clears throat> so if you're, if you're done with this topic, um, I could tell you that um, Nancy Gilbert and John Tobiason have agreed to stay on the board to be reappointed for a period of time. Um, the town manager really wanted there to be some kind of continuity because I'll be leaving September 1st and so a new director will come on and there could be continuity. Um, and um, yeah, and so I, appreciate both of you and John, you know, has he, I have tried to find someone to uh, take his place, but boy, oh boy, it's pretty hard to find someone, John. Yeah, uh, great. All those civil engineers are very, <laughs> very whatever, I cannot find them. Um, we'll, we'll work on it, we'll keep working on it. Yeah, so um, I really appreciate both of you for that. That'll be great. Um, and other than that, um, 
you know, coronavirus, <laughs> uh, you can see that we're reopening and that the town, you know, we, we're doing a lot of work on how to open the things that the governor is saying can be open, but do them safely. So for example, a lot of work is going into Puffer's Pond and the mm -hmm. pool. Um, it was just, it was decided not to do the municipal camps because it was kind of like camp without fun. And also <laughs> the amount of staff you'd need for like 10 children to not have fun didn't seem worth it. So, you know, putting those staff to work to monitor the pools and Puffer's Pond and then hopefully the spray park at Guaf Park will be done. Um, sometime in July and then monitor that too because that'll be a really nice free place for people to go and get wet and um, that kind of thing. So and then uh, folks especially at inspection services are working really hard on safe ways to have outdoor dining. Um, so there's just so much going on. Whereas meanwhile I watch 26 states who've already reopened have these from hospitalizations so kind of a schism for me because I'm supposed to weigh in on things and yet and I know that we have to help people you know return to work and keep their businesses but it's really um it's really uh difficult it's gonna happen, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. yeah it's gonna go up <clears throat> so. yeah and um yeah, we are, I don't know where, which flavor or place you're at in this, Tim, but as a department head right now, I'm being asked to consider a ton of scenarios, possible scenarios for the fall for UMass, and it's not so, I mean, anything other than all here or all remote really gets crazy, and that's where we are, we're in between, like, who, who, what distance, which thing, how do you do this, what do you do, how do you manage that, so. Mm -hmm. So, um, Julie, I'm curious of your take on this. I mean, um, <clears throat> I might have raised this a month ago, but I feel like the, I, I like the governor's presentations and I, the data from Mass Department of Public Health is amazing, is, is quite good. Then they made adjustments that I think made sense. It was not long after I asked you. I think, okay, you did notice that. Yeah, it was like, whoa. John thought it happened. Yeah, I take no credit. I'm sure there's a lot of, I'm glad they had it. But um, what I find a little disheartening is the statements about testing capacity. We're ramping up, we're doing this, but actually the numbers of tests conducted either are going down or stayed the same. And that doesn't jive. Those two things don't jive. So the, I, I think the governor's being disingenuous and I want to find some place to say, hey, <laughs> how come we're doing the same test we did six months, six weeks ago, same number per day? Well, it's very interesting. Um, in the mishmash of all the calls and emails and everything, um, some of that has been chalked up to the fact that as we reopen um, and people are you know, it's such a psychological thing. Like really nothing has changed with the virus, but we are reopening all these things. So psychologically, people are not as interested in getting testing. So it's only folks- You think they'd be more interested in getting I know I am. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I think- You wanna know your position. <laughs> to, to the rest of the fatigue. People are just like, I am done with this. Right. And- So I which- same time as the protests are happening, which are so important, the news has sort of gone like this, and there's really very little in the news, relatively speaking, about COVID. So, and it's summertime, and everybody's saying, okay, it's fine, go to the beach, go to the pool. So I think that, um, and this is what I've heard is that people are just, they're actually not in, what people still always want is the antibody testing, the serology testing, which, you know, is, I just keep telling people, well, it's really not going to give you any information because we don't know the quality of the antibody tests. We don't know if you do have antibodies, how much it protects you or for how long. Yeah. So, you know, so antibody Testing will become important, and of course, all testing is important. But um, 
So that's what I've heard. Now, right now, if I wanted to get tested, I have no real good reason to do that. But if I just wanted to, would I be able to be tested? I think you can go to CVS. You can sign up online. And I think there's not much criteria and you can get tested. You have to, yeah, a friend of mine just did this. You have to, you have to say you got some kind of symptoms. So tell them you got a cough. That's what I would do. And you can get tested. I mean, tested I don't for, want to do this. I'm just wondering how it works. Well, I think you have to, you do have to say you have, but you don't need a doctor's order. You can go to CVS in Northampton and get tested, right. lie a little bit about a symptom and you get tested for free. I heard Hadley, that urgent care in Hadley, I heard is testing. And Mark, because he's having the surgery, had to be tested. Yes. Yeah. So is the, is the Center for Extended Care situation stable or improving? Or? It is stable. We have not had any new cases in over a week. Um, it's still being monitored cl closely by the state because it's a cluster. And so while there are people who are recovered and are pulled off of that unit and go on to a regular unit, um, it's really hard in that setting to make that determination how you decide this person is 100% recovered. Um, but um, we, at, at the last I had looked, we um, had kind of the deaths had leveled off and no new cases and um, there are people who are recovering. So um, that's a really good thing. Yeah. 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 Any other clusters in Amherst or? Nope, nope. We did have um, maybe one or two in some of the group homes that we have in Amherst. We do have group homes for folks who are developmentally disabled or folks who are um, mentally ill, but none of those really rose to more than two people. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it is really good. Um, so, <laughs> you know, go, go, I know what you're saying about maybe the mentality, but going back to what, yeah, the disconnect I see is I want to be seeing more tests conducted, and they need to be required tests, not not and not based on symptom, but based on your your job and exposing yourself to individuals and and just mm -hmm. confirming that you're negative. Confirming that you're negative. Yeah. Confirming that you're negative yeah. from a, and not serology, but from a, a COVID-19 perspective. Right. Um, so, and it's interesting because we're seeing that happen on these, uh, these you know, mm, sports teams where they're bringing people in and then they're saying, oh, all these kids tested positive or whatever. But what it really is, is they tested everyone. So of course they had like three or four, I don't know if you've seen this in the paper, like not locally, but kind of around the country, different um, probably schools that were bringing back kids to do pre-sports or whatever. And, um, but if you look at it, like none of them were sick, they were all asymptomatic and they had some positives. And then yeah, that's what you want to find out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's true that if you do big batch testing like that and find the asymptomatic positives, that's really great because by the time people have symptoms, there's been a lot of exposure. Are there things like, Programs like like with the nursing homes, are they testing the employees on a regular basis or anything like that? Well, it's really interesting. They're all doing different things. There's there are not necessarily routine testing in place. Um, so initially, for example, in Massachusetts, um, nursing homes could get a whole bunch of tests and then administer them when they wanted to. And I remember the governor being really frustrated because people requested the tests and then they were kind of like hoarding them. They were waiting to test people mm. because you could only get them like one time or something. So I know things have changed now, mm. um, but yeah, they're, they're, as far as I know, there isn't a requirement for folks who work in nursing homes, for example, to get routinely tested. And I think some of that is, you know, of course, testing just shows if right now you're sick. So um, if there really was enough, 
then maybe you could do root routine testing once a week or something. Um, a friend mentioned that her husband works in a nursing home and was testing, they were testing him once a week. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where, actually. It was around in, in Massachusetts, but I don't know where. That's Does interesting. Does Cuomo request that and require that in, in New York? Yeah, I don't know. This was more local, but not obviously it's not a universal plan. Not that I know of, no, because for example, I don't think they're doing at center that at, at Center for Extended Care or Arbors. It's more based on symptoms and, and things like that, even of staff. Mm -hmm. You must have COVID fatigue too. <laughs> um, no, in some ways I don't. In some Good. ways now I'm like, you know, this, you know, this is the marathon, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel, yeah, no, I feel pretty committed to it. And there's nothing like knowing you're retiring to have renewed it. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. That's how I feel like I can do this. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Wow. Yeah. Unprecedented times, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. Yeah. But I'm on sort of a, a, a um, not a pet, not pet peeve, but anyway, I'm promoting the use of the following, and I don't know if you've been following this, but sort of banning the use of social distancing term, which is the stupidest term yes. that ever came out. We do not want to be socially distant. You want to be physically distant. So <laughs> physical, <laughs> physical distance is what should be used. And that's what epidemiologists, a lot of universities are taking on. And yeah. it's really come up this week. It, it just, and as soon as someone says it and you think about it, you go, yeah. yeah I, that was in my mind a couple weeks ago. And like I it fell out the other side. That's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. It would be nice to switch over to that, wouldn't it? Right. Some some people, when they say social distancing, they mean they mean a distance and a mask. But let's just make it clear, you know, a, a physical distance and mask. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the social part just ugh. I don't yeah know, I to be connected with people. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So it's funny. Are we all connecting a little more now because we're all using, a lot of us are using Zoom and FaceTime and we're on the phone more. I mean, sometimes in some ways I feel like, you know, with some people who are further away that I don't get to see that much anyway, I feel more connected because we're all kind of in it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a certain way, yeah. In a certain well, way. there you are. Your wife is still on the other side of the country, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's taking... Greta out for a walk wants to know if I can talk. So I, I said, uh, I said in a little bit. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I just the, the, again back on the testing. There's there's a lot of planning and and operations and stuff that uses the word testing as a basis for monitoring and making decisions about actions. And I see a dis, I just see a disconnect between actually doing that and saying you're doing it. So just, just the kind of thing you're talking about. So it'll be very interesting to see. Because I don't know, you know, you have a pretty strong negative opinion about serological testing, and I'm not sure that's held by everybody. And I tend to more agree with you on that. I, I don't know. And there's things being worked on at UMass. But even if you have a really robust test for the presence of antibodies, do you know, do we know what it means? No, I don't know. I mean, there are a couple problems with that because the, the actual positive rate is so low that it's very hard to have a test good enough to really say it's a true positive, even if you know what positive means. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, just tough. Yeah, harder than finding the actual, say, doing two or three tests with different proteins from the COVID virus mm -hmm. that you say, yeah, it's this, I got, I've got two, and I've got an envelope protein and this protein, yeah, you have the virus. Mm -hmm. Whereas the antibody side is uh, to say you had it and these were produced is, yeah, it's a much higher bar. Mur murkier. Thing. Mur murkier. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. So I, I think that's all I have on it. Um, second, second Thursday in July, maybe. Excuse me? Are we meeting in July? Oh. 
Yes, yes. Because sometimes think. we have it, but I don't think there's any reason not to. We should, basically. No, I mean, I think that it would be great to keep meeting this summer yeah. until you get regs done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I ain't going anywhere, so. No. <laughs> Especially if we meet this way. I, I, I hope to be somewhere else across the country trying to July fetch, 9th. fetch my wife, but um, I can do it remotely from wherever. Are you going to drive out? Uh, possibly. It depends on, on a couple of things. A couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, July 9th. That yeah. would be it. Does that work for everyone? Yes. Yep. Who <laughs> knows? That, you know, you're talking about being more connected. In fact, there's a board that I used to serve on that I'm being asked to serve again in a certain capacity. And I've written back, I said, if that board would stop being so old and conservative and will meet remotely and not travel, yeah, I'll participate because I don't have the money to travel. It's all business people mostly. It's yeah. an indu uh, related to, they, they, you know, I don't have a business, you know, I don't have the money to travel. I don't have the time to travel, but I have the time to, to remotely get together. And it tends to make people focus too. Oh like, yeah. You know, we're meeting all day. So you got this agenda. Instead, you're meeting for two hours. Get the work done. <laughs> Get it done. Yeah. No, I, so I it's think an interesting. I think it's going to make a lot of that kind of stuff say, why are we spending two, a thousand or two thousand dollars each for these 20 people to get together once a year or twice a year? Right. right. Is it really that much benefit? Yeah. I don't think so. No, I, I agree. I mean, because the uh, travel time is not fun or productive. Right. <laughs> We're safe now. Or now say, right, exactly. Yeah, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the physical distancing came up with a, a link. I got a, I forget, Blue Zone, something I read. It was an epidemiologist in the middle of the country at a university who uh, really had a good assessment of, you know, the logical stuff about, um, about how, you know, transmission, you know, exposure, duration, intensity, all the things that are just completely logical. Right, right. <laughs> the, and he said, and the social distancing thing is nuts. It's physical distancing. Yeah. That's yeah, when yeah. the light bulb hit me. It was like Tuesday or Wednesday. It was like, really? And then I was on a call nationally, uh, not uh, civil engineering department heads, and somebody else, somebody else brought it up, and I and a bunch of us chimed in. Yes, that's the term to be used. Yeah. So. All right. I don't know if I'll, if I'll, we'll be the change. We'll start doing it. Well, badger the chancellor to that effect or not. I don't know. We'll see. Well, especially good in a university, I think, mm -hmm. right? Because oh. it's all about being social and it's like. Yeah, as I'm looking through tables of buildings and rooms and square footage and dividing by 113 square feet, which is the area of a six foot radius circle, um, to come mm -hmm. up with numbers of people, it, it's physical distancing. <laughs> no question about that. Yeah. Or trying to get back in labs, right, Tim? I, I'm, I'm on the reviewing side of uh, of of a lot of those, so. Mm. Mm. Well, that's hard. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Well, Nancy, good luck to Mark. Okay. Yes, I'm, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. Day surgery, out and home. Yeah. What about the ice and the pain meds? I hope. <laughs> Okay. Got some of that. Okay. All right. So see you in July. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Be safe. Be healthy. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.